What's up? I'm back. In this segment, we're going to talk about the sun. The sun is always an interesting topic because it 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 represents. It's funny when you talk when you think about the sun. It represents something that everyone takes for granted, right? Meaning, you wake up in a day. Think of it. You wake up in a day. You probably wake up to light, unless you work a night shift. You wake up to light, so you wake up to the sun. It gives you heat, right? So it gives you light. It gives you heat. Even the way you perceive time is based on the sun. So it will be like you know Monday morning, Monday morning, okay, Monday morning. That's the sun. Tuesday morning, twenty four hours later, that's the sun. <laughs> right? Wednesday morning, twenty four hours later, that's the sun. So even when we understand time, is based on the sun as well, right? So this goes into even if you get into physics, or, I mean into science or spirituality. Or even just everyday life stuff. So in everyday life, I just described to you how the sun would be the, your source of light, your source of warmth, your source of being able to, to tell the time. If you talk about spirituality, which we will go into astrology, in, in astrology, any body, planetary body that you can see in the sky has an effect on your psychology. The closer the, the planetary body, the more effect that planet has on your psychology, right? So... What is the sun? The sun is the brightest light in the sky, right? The sun is so bright that when it's when it's daytime, you don't see any other planet besides the sun, or any any other planetary body besides the sun. Maybe occasionally the moon. So, in a sense, if you talk about astrologically, which is really spirituality, you're talking about the center of astrology. That's why in most astrological systems, the sun is is if it's not the center, it's a secondary piece. And most systems is the center. Right, some astrologies might use the some astrological base systems might use the moon, but in most astrology astrological systems, the sun is at the center of it. So when you count astrology and spirituality, then you say, "Whoa!" So even even spiritually, it's at the center. I mean, the Bible says, "What? Let it be light." Right? The Egyptians, the first god, or the first Ennead, which is the gods that most people can relate to, is Atum Ra, which is what the sun. <laughs> right? So you can see that whether we're talking about spirituality, we're talking about Scientifically, we talk about everyday life. Well, I covered everyday life. I covered spirituality, even scientifically. If you look at science, how does science understand a lot of things that, a lot of theories, a lot of understandings of the universe, a lot of our understandings of, the, you would even say, gamma rays, the stars, is based on the sun. The sun is a star. So when we understand our sun, it helps us understand stars a lot better. Right, even like when we talk about and and what's that really? The suns, the stars. It's talking about light. So when we talk about the Big Bang, it was a big explosion, right? You could you could kind of correlate that to light. So when you look at even scientifically, even if you if you were studying chemistry, you know all atoms, a lot of atoms, I should say, come from the sun. Atoms being the building block of minerals, which build, which is the building block of life, right? Comes from the sun. So when you're looking at it, whether you were if you're a chemist, whether you're a physicist, whether you are a meteorologist studying the weather, whether you're a biologist, the sun would be at the center of everything you do, even if you don't know it. And that's the difference. When you talk about the sun, you talk about something that's so powerful, so important, that you can be a person who doesn't even care about the sun. You could be a person who says, I'm going to get skin cancer. A person who, even though the sun is, a, is actually a source of vitamin D, which we all need. Right, but of course, too much of it can give you skin cancer, and just like a plant, you have certain plants that when you leave them out the sun, they get burned. Right, so the sun being the greatest source of life we have on Earth can also harm us if we get too much of it. So it's like a, it's because of that. I think you could say quality. People, most people ignore the sun, but it's not something you could ignore. And when you're either trying to understand your, your spiritual place in the world or understand your physical place in the world either way eventually it's going to lead back to the sun because even if you're a person who says you're talking about let's say something totally unrelated to the sun right in some ways right your diet right how come a lot of people are pushing vegetarian or plant-based diets right there's a whole bunch of reasons why but if you look at plants plants have a way of extracting energy directly from the sun where animals, human beings included, can't. So that quality makes the plant cell unique. And because that quality makes the plant cell unique, plants are an efficient way of getting energy. But then what is that? 
that's still soul energy, right? So when you look at it, even when you talk about meat eating versus plant eating, and I'm not saying that eating meat is bad. That's not the point of that. The point of bringing that up was to show even when you're talking about something that you may not associate with the sun, right? Plants or vegetarian-based diets. It's still silently acknowledging or going back to the sun. So that's why I find the sun so unique because in a lot of different ways, whether you talk about spirituality, science, everyday life, it's a factor. It's something that you cannot ignore. Because a true spiritual system is supposed to teach you that God or divinity or the divine essence, whatever they want to call it, it's in all things. We get used to not paying attention to certain things. Right, So if you're into diet, you get used to focusing on diet, not focusing on other things. So you wouldn't really sometimes associate diet with the sun. right? I mean, you could even be a, a, an inventor. right? You invented a satellite. right? You invented something that, a spaceship. And you'd be thinking about a whole bunch of different things, but then you, didn't, you wouldn't realize, oh, okay, if, I'm gonna, if there's, so much, there's a lot of satellites on the Earth. So because of that, solar rays could affect them. Solar flares could affect them a lot now, more. Right. So what happens? Well, then we got to focus on the sun a lot, meaning even if you're inventing a satellite, you're not thinking about the sun directly. Just the fact of what you're doing, that, that invention that you're creating forces another scientist to pay attention to the sun. Right. So in some ways, because I know a lot of people viewing this video might be more from the spiritual background. Real spirituality focus tells you to, to see beauty in all things. And beauty is the sun. Right. Realistically. <laughs> and. And it's, it's not something that really could be debated because anything material that you see that you would call beautiful comes from the sun. Any person that you may call beautiful, take away the sun, that person would die. Right? Even so much, we just finished the holidays, right? Everyone had their New Year's, their Thanksgiving, their Christmas. And now this is a time period where people are depressed. People go through depressions more this year than any other time of year. Why? We could say well, because the holidays have passed and there's nothing else left, but they know Scientists know, no, it's because this is also the time of year where there's less sunlight. And because this is the time of year with less sunlight, depression tends to go up. So from every single factor, every single way you look at it, astrologically, astronomy, everyday, everyday local life, right? Spiritually, the sun is supposed to take center stage. That's why most spiritual systems talk so much about light. And we all know light comes for, for the most part from the sun. Right. Yes, we could get now. We have lights that we produce artificially without sunlight. But in a lot of ways, even that as an inventor, if there was no sun, forget about the fact that if there was no sun, you probably wouldn't be able to live. Life on Earth would be too cold. You could tell the sunlight. The sun was probably the inspiration for the original inventors to pursue electricity and then eventually create things like light bulbs and things that can produce light or photons without the sun. But even the sun inspired even that. That's why in spirituality, the sun is always associated with consciousness. Because even when we do things that we think are not related to the sun, you know, you, you, you turn it back, you turn the clock back, you look closely and you say, oh, oh, wow, the sun really influenced me to do that. Right. And I think in a lot of ways, sometimes that gets missed. And I give you a good example of that, because even when we talk about things like Kemet and we talk about like, for instance, Eo Egypt, right? People say the Egypt is worse than the sun. And, you know, people who study Egyptian spirituality will look at that and say, hell no, they didn't, they didn't worship the sun. They worshiped, they didn't worship anything, but they looked at Ra as solar energy. As, and, and when we say solar energy, it doesn't always need the sun to produce that energy. So meaning, because if you say solar energy, somebody might say, well, what if you're in a place where there's no sunlight? Well, in theory, Ra or the energy that the Egyptians were describing can, can still be activated even in a place of no sun. Kind of similar to chi, when so many people talk about chi and divine breath, and it gets associated with divine breath, but as you understand, if you start to understand Eastern spiritual systems a lot better and clearer, you realize chi can flow in places where there's no oxygen, right? So then the person who studies, let's say, Egyptian spirituality will go back at the person who says the Egyptians were the sun which was started by Egyptologists when they you know were examining Egyptian religions and they mistranslated certain things but the funny thing is both parties still have some truth to them because in the argument that the person who studies Egyptian spirituality would 
would come back with they're not wrong right the Egyptians didn't worship the sun the way the Egyptologists say it but in the argument what gets lost is the actual importance the importance of the sun what gets lost is the fact that the sun even that's why in Egypt every single god was depicted or associated with the sun every single god even if they weren't a sun god obviously because every Egyptian god wasn't a sun god every god still has some relationship to Ra or one of the incarnations of Ra Amun Atum almost every god did if, even if it was a conflicting relationship right like Apep competing with him now when you look at it from that point of view the funny thing is that they, the people who study Egyptian spirituality might miss the fact that it's not really about saying the Egyptians worship the sun or the, having to defend that because anyone can see once you read the script, the Egyptian you know, manuscripts and you study their religion, their spiritual systems, they didn't worship the sun the way Egyptologists say it. But what they miss in that argument is the fact that the sun is, was the center of everything the Egyptians did, if that makes any sense. Even if you're talking about solar energy can be activated in any place that's not that the sun doesn't the sun doesn't have to be in a place and that solar energy can be activated yeah because every particle many particles that we're talking about atoms for instance right are produced by the sun right so there's atoms in places flying around in space that there's no sunlight but yet that energy is still there that's the point so even when an alchemist talks about metal and they talk about transferring it from one metal to the next metal within that metal there's the metal actually come the energy of it inside of it comes from the sun so sometimes in the argument to defend the, the, the ancient chemites the people practicing modern egyptian spirituality may not see that the sun is at the center of your understanding of the world because even when, when we talk about just look at the physical world the sky is not really blue the sun is not even yellow <laughs> the sun is actually white if you went out in space and saw the sun the sun is actually white in color Right, it's just that it looks yellow or orange or red when it hits the atmosphere. So when you look at it, you look at the sun is not really um, yellow. The sky is not really blue. When you're looking up the stars, right, the stars that you're looking up at, a lot of light that you're looking up at was actually 100 million, 200 million, 300 million years ago, right? So when you look at it, very even the sun that we're seeing now, when we look at the sunlight like now, we have like about an eight or nine minute delay. So that means if the sun was to be destroyed right now and light went away from the sun, we would only realize it if we're looking at it from our naked eyes nine minutes later. The reason why that's important, especially when you start to, because the sun, I predict, is going to take center stage as we start to try to understand time. Because as you start to try to understand time, you start to realize that even when, physics, when, when physicists say, oh, time is centered in the fourth dimension, and the fact that time may be going on right now. So maybe meaning the past, present, and future might all be going on at the same time. What does that mean? Well, it means kind of that when you look at it, even the light that we're looking at, forget about it being eight or nine minutes delay, like meaning the sun I'm seeing now left the sun eight, nine minutes ago. The light, the photons, because the base of light is the photon, right? The photon that I'm seeing, right? And of course, you need millions of photons to see light. You can't see light just looking at one photon, right? But the photons that we're looking at was produced, could be from 10,000 years ago to 200,000 years ago. Meaning, when the photon is produced in the middle of the sun, it bounces around, right? The atoms in the sun floating around. So it bounces, like, when, it, when it's produced by the core of the sun, it doesn't leave the sun until, depends on the, on the photon, 10,000, maybe 170,000 years ago. So meaning that even the light I'm seeing now, even though it, was, it, it left the sun eight or nine minutes ago, it was created potentially 200,000 years ago. So the light that we are seeing now was created before human civilization even came close to reaching its peak. So when you look at it from that point of view, it affects the way you perceive time. And you're seeing it that the past and present is actually, in a sense, intertwined. Right, and the past and present is intertwined, but because we're only seen in 3D, because time is based more rooted in the fourth dimension according to physics, we're not seeing certain things that we're supposed to see. So we see the past, but we confuse the past of being the present. And I know that's kind of hard for a lot of people to understand, but the past and present are very intertwined with each other. And when you understand that they're intertwined with each other, the future starts to reveal itself to you, or you start to understand that more, or you get yourself the foundation to understand or being able to really calculate the future so when the egyptians were talking about Ra's son 
yes, he is. And yes, the sun's beyond Ra. And yes, the people who practice comedic spirituality should defend that. But in the defense, they miss a lot of key things that could help them understand not just their spiritual evolution, but also their physical past, as well as maybe the, the future. And that's why the sun is at the center of all spiritual systems. The sun is at the center of all astrological systems. The sun is at the center of all scientific systems, even if the scientific system may not understand it. Even if you're a geologist and you're studying rocks and you're studying lava, that rock, that lava, either came from our sun or another sun, right? So the sun is basically at the center of everything we do. The real difference, though, when you start to try to understand who you are as a spiritual being, having a physical experience, then you begin to understand that you can no longer ignore the little things. When you hear the line, I see beauty in all things great and small, that becomes very important spiritually. Because when you're trapped, in, I guess, in a 3D way of thinking, or a very externalized way of thinking, you get used to not caring about certain things. If I say, oh, the sky is not really blue, most people will say, okay, that's nice. What does that mean? If you say the sun is not really yellow, they'll say, who cares? It looks yellow to me, and that's all that, that's all that matters. And that same mindset is what prevents the person from really interacting with the environment the way they're supposed to. That's why the sun was so associated with intellect, because there's a connection between the two. Because if we say in science that, hey, when winter time comes, people get depressed, there's a reason for that, right? So at the same time, in order to avoid the depression, we have to know, I guess you could say we have to know that fact, that people get depressed in this time period. And then when we say, okay, that means the sun is important. And then we need to open ourselves up more to understanding the sun, to understanding its importance. Because realistically, that will lead into chemistry and lead into hydrogen and lead into other things that will help you on your journey. So, hope this video helps the sun, why it's important, and why it's your first ancestor and probably most important. Until next time, peace.